a bit. Okay, the, this is what I'm gonna be, um, this finish is what I'm gonna be showing tonight. Um, it's a, just a um, bowl bowl and it's got uh, the whole outside of it is beaded. <clears throat> and the tool I'm using to do this is D-Way's um, D-Way's beating tool. And this particular one is an eighth inch. This particular one is an eighth inch. Um, with D-Way, you can go all the way up to like one that does, I think it does a half inch bead. And I think it does it like in maybe 16th increments. I just bought the one. I know um, Kurt bought a set of them that are arranged. Um, this one individually, they run about 50 bucks. Um, I don't know, I'm sure you're getting some kind of a discount with the set. Uh, but I'm gonna demonstrate how this is used. Uh, the bowl itself, obviously I cut with a, um, a bowl gouge the outside of it. Uh, the inside, because it's undercut, I used one of Bill Atchison's uh, homemade tools, which if you, um, if you don't know if you really want a tool or not, but you want to try it for an extended period of time, some of Bill's stuff is really great. Uh, I do pretty much all my undercutting with his. And it's just a homemade tool. Got a piece of high speed steel on the end of it. Uh, he can make it to shape whatever you want. Um, the other tool I have that I'll be using is another D-Way tool. And um, for the end of that, it's D-Way's diamond tool. It's, uh, can I get that? it's pointed, it's got two flat sides on it. And uh, it's great for getting in the middle of the beads and cleaning up between them or it's actually made to make beads itself. I won't get into that with it right now. I'll just be doing, using the, uh, the beading tool. I'll be doing that on two different pieces. Um, here. This one, it's got two flat faces on it. So it's like a straight feeding. The other one will be like this bowl where it's a rounded edge. How you approach that. Starting with the straight one though. Two things you have to do with the straight one, but with both of them, um, beating tool. I can't remember. <laughs> Sorry. You're in this position. You want to be on the center of your piece. And you want to start at the highest point and work your way down the sides. At, at the highest point, you're going to be straight into it. But when you make your next one, you're going to be moving around the side and you're going to be, you're going to stay parallel to the side. Okay. Well, I, I do that a lot. 
I like it's um would come in it, it's a very light cut that's why i don't even have a handle on this tool because it's such a light cut you really don't even need a handle but to present it again you're on the center line your handle's down and come in a little bit closer Start it and you just kind of wiggle it back and forth. Okay, I got a nice bead there. Um, so now the next one is going to be around the side. So I need to move around. Again, so I can come in perpendicular to the wood itself. And I'm just going to try and get it to the bottom of the existing bead. Get the two sides started. Come in a little closer And again, just rock it in. On the side. When I first started doing this, I noticed that I wasn't getting far enough in and I wasn't making a full round on the beads. So uh, you just have to watch a little bit. Uh, very forgiving tool. about the fact that you have to stand the center line because that tool has to be coming in right in line with the groove in that tool. Otherwise, if it comes in at an angle, you're not going to end up with a rounded bead. It's going to be like an oval. We'll make a couple more on that side. Okay, this was a piece of ash, um, hard, it smells uh, pretty good. Mike, what? you want to tell how you sharpen it? And what speed are you using on the lathe? I'm about 500, but it, it doesn't really matter. I mean, probably the faster, the better. How to sharpen the tool ray? Yeah. Um, I just put it on my uh, grinder bed and followed this this curve or this. Yeah, but sharpened they work very well. Dull they're not worth it. <laughs> no, no, it's a um. You got to be sharp. Um, I did some Norway maple. Some of the ones you'll see. I got a little chip out on them. Um, even on these, 
there's a little bit of fuzz between them. Um, there's multiple ways you can clean these up. One is just to take a piece of 3M pad. I found it to be about the easiest. That thing brings it up. <laughs> All right. choking. I'm, I'm choking out my camera. Um, that cleans them up pretty good. Um, if not, that brings in the other, uh, other tool by D Wayne, the diamond shape. Which is which has a point on it, and you can take it and just go in and dress up all those um, spaces in between. But you use a skew. I don't know. You could use a skew if you go straight in at 90 degrees. Uh, the problem with a skew is you're running in a long grain, short grain direction. And sometimes you'll catch that long grain coming around and your skew, skew will point will skate right across all your work. Yeah. And then, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it doesn't look so good. Yet, yeah. and, and the thing about skew <laughs> tools is the fact that they seem to run very true on the wood. They don't jump around, they don't go anywhere. That's why I got it. Um, once or um, another little added, you can do. Do to uh, you can burn the um, segments between the um, beads. The trouble is, most of the time we're used to using a piece of wire on a flat space, but these are running down a hill, so you you can't really use that. Um, somebody come up with a brilliant idea of taking a piece of um, formica. formica, yeah, from a countertop. This is a piece from, uh, it's just a sample. You can get it at Menards or Home Depot or anywhere in the kitchen department. And um, you can run it on any angle you want in there. Um, and it burns the uh, joints just fine. Well, Mike, it's a freebie. All you do is walk up and take a couple of them. Wow. Yeah. Kitchen area. I like the bevel on the end, so it's a little sharper. Looking good. Do we have any beading tools at the shop to try out? Ah, uh, boy. I don't believe we do. Arrange with me. I have a set of them from the uh -huh. Might be something we could go together, maybe as a group. And I guess you haven't seen my bowls. They're all beading tools. <laughs> <laughs> as you can see, that makes the, the beads pop quite a bit. And again, with with the three M tab, you're not going to take anything off. If you are going to try to sand these uh, beads, I wouldn't go anything more than or below like a four or 600. Uh, I've done a couple and I tried to sand them even just lightly, but the beads are so small, I flattened them right off. So yes. 600 How about steel wool. Probably work too. 
A piece of 600 Abra net works quite well, especially one that's been used a bit. Okay, a little different because once I did the one on the, the farthest one out, the rest of them just were parallel all the way in, all the way along. Whereas when you have a round, when you have a rounded face, you have to watch yourself that you're trying to keep the tool parallel or perpendicular to the face of the wood you're cutting into. So the rounded face, I'm going to be trying to cut right into the highest point on the curve. I've got one good beat there. Now I'm going to have to start going around the curve. So each, each cut after this, I'm going to have to move my tool rest, move my tool around the curve. You realize you're off a little bit to one side of the other. Just back out a little bit and just slide it over just a, a tap. And uh, it's pretty uh, consistent. As you're working your way around, are a little higher than other ones. You can just keep adjusting them as you go around. You can cut some a little deeper and blend them in. Use that uh, diamond tool one more time in there. Roll that diamond tool, kind of like a thimble gouge, and cut a bead with it. One more time with the uh, the three amp. A little practice, you can, uh, that should be all you need for a finish. Obviously, you're not going to get a, if you want to gloss, you know, go over a bunch of them, it's not really going to show with the beads. Okay, now I'm going to inside. Sanding, if the, the, the beading should be close enough that you're not going to notice any imperfections, you won't see any sanding marks or anything. So that part of it's pretty forgiving. I'm not going to burn this one right now. I think you've seen that. You understand that. Um, any questions from anybody? Uh, I looked it up. Sorby wants $35 for an eighth inch bead. Okay. Don't buy it. Don't buy it. The D way only. Don't do it. 
I've never tried a sorbet, so I can't say one or the other. But I had one, and I ended up making it into a banana. Okay. Not worth the hoop. Okay. Well, and I mean, a lot of the purists want you to do all your all this by hand with just the um, regular tools. But if you're going to do repeat stuff like this on a lot of things, um, I think it's a tool worth having. You made it look easy, Mike. It is. It is. It's just a matter of uh, getting the touch for it, getting the spacing in. Um, I'll show you a little bit what the variety of possibilities on some of this. So do you, you're going to finish sand it before you put the, the beads in? That's why we need to keep on There's no real need to. If you've got a dry, obviously it's got to be a dry piece of wood. The beads cover up any kind of imperfection as long okay. as you've got the shape right. It's got to be dead round. Yeah. The, the, it's not something you're going to turn the bowl and then sometime later go back and beat it. No. You got the old hole outside again. They're, they're, they are very particular about it being true. Yep. So, I mean, if, if you turn it and let it sit, plan on turning it again to get it true before you even try to beat it. Exactly. But I started doing this with the thought of going beyond this, but this is as far as I got. I kind of so I'm stuck with this level of it right now. I'll probably bring it farther. Maybe when I take it to the next step, I'll do that as another demo. What would the next step be, Mike? Um, maybe where I got it from, the person was doing platters. And once they got the beading like this, they were burning lines the other And they were coloring in segments of that. And patterns where it looked like a southwestern... Uh, Motif on it. It's a vast illusion. We will see a lot of it. Yeah, that's what they call a vast illusion. But uh, you know, sizes of the uh, DOA tools fun to use a thinner one on either side of a bigger one. So you can create some different steps as well. Put mm. mm. a down and uh, a sixteenth one on either side of it. Yep. Just, if if you decide to get them, play with them. Um, here I've got two of them with flat sides. And if you go down below. One has a foot on it, one doesn't. So I tried to um, bring one up in the air a little bit. This one has got a foot on it. Nice. And one of the things that has to be explained is Mike starts with a beautiful form. If you look at the one that's just to the left there, that is a perfect way around. And uh, the one that's just out of the picture there, there you go. Oh, this one, okay. That is a, a beautiful bow, whether it has the beads or not, and it just gets accentuated when Mike applied the beads to it. The beautiful form, the brim, the top, just works so well with it. That whole bow was a keeper. And this is the other round one. 
And also I, I put a foot on that to lift that one a little bit. Bring it around. Nice form there too. Yeah, the lift looks really nice on that form. What wood types are those? These are all maple. These three are Norway. I'm not sure about this one. And uh, to one, be, oh, I'm sorry. Be successful. If maple, hard maple is a very good wood. Something that has, is is it's harder. Um, you wouldn't want to try pine. Uh, ring porous woods don't work quite as well. It, it, the closer the rings are together, the better off you're going to be. Uh, white oak would work well. The red oak. Uh, Probably will work all right, but not quite as well as white oak. Uh, having having the correct wood, ma hard maple. This hard maple that Mike has is perfect. Yep. And even if it was a little chippy, this ash seemed to cut the best. Um, the shape that I like the least has become the most functional bowl I got. Uh, because I'm also a rock hound. You did a nice job on the rocks, Mike. Oh, thanks. Actually, I did. And a Putoski, a Putoski over on the left? No. Nope. Oh. Most of them are Lake Superior rocks, but uh, nothing. Oh. Did you tumble them? Yeah. Cool. You got to admit, though, they make a, they do a great job of covering up in the hole that's in the bottom. <laughs> we never would have known. <laughs> small bowl. <laughs> it's just a small one, though. Mm -hmm. The rocks fall out. <laughs> That's all I got, unless somebody else has some questions or something. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me. My first time. Good job, Mike. Great nice job. Nice job, Mike. Nice job.